Day two of creation often gets overlooked because of, well, the false heliocentric globe Earth model that has been pushed on us for several centuries. I'd like to spend some time discussing what took place on day two and hopefully provide you with a better picture as to what exactly was created and why it's imperative to understand as a believer in the gospel of the kingdom of God. Stay tuned. We've all seen it, whether we have eyes to truly comprehend it or not. Our enemy likes to shroud the truth in plain sight and has operated this way since the origination of the entertainment industry. Once you've waded through the deception, it becomes apparent that the subject matter relating to day two of creation is a vital piece of the truth mosaic. Not only does eschatology come alive in a whole new way, but your appreciation and excitement about our enclosed earth habitat does as well. To build on a foundation of context, let's start by taking a look at the very beginning of creation. Genesis 1 verses 1 and 2. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. There are a couple of things I'd like to point out in these two introduction verses. The first is that, although verse 1 sounds like a summary statement of everything that God created from day 1 to day 6, I don't believe that to be the case. On day 1, Yahweh created the heavens, plural, where He and all the other spirit beings reside, the formless and void earth on our plane of existence, as well as all the waters. I'll expound on the significance of the plural heavens being made on day one after we've read a few other specific texts. The second thing to take note of is that the creation of the waters isn't specified in Genesis, even though it's obviously implied, as God's spirit is said to have hovered over the surface of the waters. This is where a very revealing passage out of the companion book to Genesis, the book of Jubilees, shed some light on the specifics of what was directly created on day one. Jubilees 2.2 says, For on the first day he created the heavens which are above, and the earth, and the waters. Without the creation details found in Jubilees chapter 2, we wouldn't have the direct mention of the waters being created, as well as the locality of the created heavens above. Another exciting detail packed away in Jubilees chapter 2 is the mention of all the different angelic spirit beings created on day 1, which my Entertaining Angels video series will cover in great detail. We know that like all things, angels are created entities, but we aren't told which day they were created on in the Genesis account. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Book of Jubilees and its history, I highly recommend checking it out. Continuing on in Genesis, then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. God made the firmament, and separated the waters which were below the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. God called the firmament heaven, and there was evening and there was morning a second day. Here we have on the second day a particular structure being made, a structure called a firmament. The Hebrew word for firmament is rakia, Strong's number 7549. It's defined as being an extended surface or expanse and comes from the root word raka, Strong's number 7554, which means to beat out, stamp, or spread out. As we can see here with the couple of verses on the right, it implies that what is being hammered, beaten, and spread out is a solid object. The firmament, or kia, is solid. The book of Jubilees similarly records in Jubilees chapter 2 verse 4, And on the second day he created the firmament in the midst of the waters, and the waters were divided on that day. Half of them went up above, and half of them went down below the firmament that was in the midst over the face of the whole earth. And this was the only work God created on the second day. We're informed that the firmament structure that was created on day two was placed in the midst of the waters, the waters that were created a day earlier. As a result of the installment of this physical firmament barrier, half of the waters went up above and half of them went down below. 
Once again, we see the usage of directional terms being applied to what took place. Water going up, and water going down. Another fascinating parallel passage regarding the creation of the firmament can be found in the writings of Ezra, the prophet and priest. 2 Ezra 6.41 says, Again, on the second day, you did create the spirit of the firmament, and did command him to divide and separate the waters, that one part might move upward, and the other part remain beneath. Did you notice how Ezra stated that God created the spirit of the firmament, and also referred to the firmament by using a masculine pronoun? Although this may be for another video, I think it's important to note that the firmament is much more than just a solid vault. If it is indeed crafted from spirit, it may be more than just a lifeless object. Continuing on in 2nd Ezra's, It is he who searches the deep and its treasures, who has measured the sea and its contents, who has enclosed the sea in the midst of the waters, and by his word has suspended the earth over the water, who has spread out the heaven like an arch, and founded it upon the waters. Now we see Ezra describing heaven as being spread out like an arch and founded upon the waters. How can this be? Isn't heaven an ethereal, interdimensional habitation located outside of time and space? Hardly. No! I'd like to highlight an often overlooked detail found back in Genesis 1 verse 8. Not only are we introduced to the firmament structure itself, but we are also acquainted with the name that Yahweh gave the firmament. Its name? Heaven. The Hebrew word for heaven is Shemaim, Strong's number 8064, and can be defined as heaven and sky. It's a word that is used hundreds of times in the scriptures. If we check its further usage in the text analysis, we can see that the word Mayim which is derived from Shemaim, is used 17 times to refer to the heavens in the Hebrew scriptures. What's the significance? Strong's number 4325, which is also the word Mayim, is defined as waters. Heaven, the name that was given to the firmament, has the concept of water built right into its name. How convenient, being that the firmament directly above our heads is holding up a sea of waters. Check out the following details that are recorded by Ezra in the rhetorical questions asked of him by an angel of God. 2nd Ezra 4, 7-8 says, And he said to me, If I had asked you, How many dwellings are in the heart of the sea? Or how many streams are at the source of the deep? Or how many streams are above the firmament? Or which are the exits of Sheol? Or which are the entrances of paradise? Perhaps you would have said to me, I never went down into the deep, nor is yet into Sheol neither did I ever ascend into heaven. The prior verses inform us that there are streams of water above the firmament of heaven. And did you notice that the angel speaks of heaven and the firmament interchangeably? We have a second witness in this next passage out of the prayer of Azariah, Azariah also known as Abednego, being one of the three Hebrews that was cast into the fiery furnace in Daniel chapter 3. Prayer of Azariah 1 verse 38 says, Bless Yahweh, all you waters above the heaven. Sing praise to him, and highly exalt him forever. Jacob's son Levi records the following descriptions that he witnessed firsthand while being taken up in the spirit to where the Most High dwells. Then there fell upon me a sleep, and I beheld a high mountain, and I was upon it. And behold, the heavens were opened, and an angel of God said to me, Levi, enter. And I entered from the first heaven, and I saw there a great sea hanging. Levi confirmed that there is a great sea situated above the first firmament layer of heaven. Yes, the first heaven. Levi goes on to see a few other heavens in his fascinating book. Which leads me back to what I mentioned earlier in the video about the plurality of the heavens. In the beginning, more specifically on day one according to the account Moses scribed in Jubilees chapter 2, Yahweh created the firmament structures where he resides, and then built the firmament that exists right above us on day two. For more information, keep an eye out for this video regarding how many heavens I believe were created in total, and what's contained within each of them. 
The psalmist, who happens to be our fourth witness, writes, Praise him, highest heavens, and the waters that are above the heavens. Here, once again, we see a reference to the waters being above the firmament. The reason why I'm putting so much emphasis on this is because of all the wild and eisegetical theories regarding what happened to the waters above the firmament after the flood, and even more importantly, what happened to the firmament itself. All four of our previously mentioned witnesses describe the waters being above an intact firmament while in a post-flood setting. That means that both the firmament and the waters above it are still there to this very day. In Psalm 148.4, we also see that there are heavens reckoned as being higher than some of the others. This makes perfect sense, especially when we reflect on one of Yahweh's titles, that being the Most High. Fitting, isn't it? God sits as the Most High at the furthest height of the heavens. Daniel 4.17 says, This sentence is by the decree of the angelic watchers, and the decision is a command of the holy ones in order that the living may know that the Most High is ruler over the realm of mankind, and bestows it on whom he wishes, and sets over it the lowliest of men. What else do the scriptures say about the firmaments of heaven? They declare God's glory, and show the work of his hands. Psalm 19.1 The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows the work of his hands. The firmament is powerful. Psalm 50 verse 1 Hallelujah! Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. The firmament is fastened to the earth, and the heights of the firmaments are made firm, hence the word firm-a-ment. Amos 9.6 says, The one who builds his upper chambers in the heavens and has fastened his vaulted dome over the earth, he who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth, Yahweh is his name. 2 Peru 21.4 says, O you that have made the earth, hear me, that have fixed the firmament by the word, and have made firm the height of the heaven by the Spirit, that have called from the beginning of the world that which did not yet exist, and they obey you. You that have commanded the air by your nod, you have seen those things which are to be as those things which you are doing. The firmament is constructed of awesome sapphire crystal stone, Ezekiel 1.22. And the likeness of the firmament above the heads of the living creatures was as the color of awesome crystal stretched forth over their heads above. In Ezekiel 10 verse 1, Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubim, there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. The firmament is strong and acts as a magnifying glass from Yahweh's perspective. Job 37.18 Have you with him spread out the sky, which is strong, and as a molten looking glass? Isaiah 40.22 He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them out like a tent to live in. The firmament is strong enough to support its creator. Job 22.14 Clouds are a hiding place for him, so that he cannot see, and he walks on the vault of heaven. The firmament will roll back like a scroll at the return of our Messiah on the day of the Lord. Revelation 6.14 And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. The firmament. Be sure to like us on Facebook, and subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. And, if you've been blessed by any of the teachings or music on this channel, please consider becoming a patron over at Patreon, or giving a donation on PayPal. The links for both are in the description. Thanks, and Yahweh bless you.